and welcome to Easy Gluten Free. Today I'll be making a Bailey's Chocolate Cheesecake with a chocolate walnut short crust and Bailey's Chocolate Ganache to top it all off. Now this one, my friends, is unbridled decadence and should never be confused with the more figure-friendly desserts I've previously posted on the channel. Now as far as the Bailey's Irish Cream goes, the research I've done seems to indicate that it's okay to consume while on a gluten-free diet but I've included a link to their website in the description box below. If you don't feel comfortable using the Bailey's Irish Cream, you could always substitute heavy cream or another spirit that you do feel comfortable using, but make sure the flavor mixes well with chocolate. All right, to get started, preheat the oven to 325 degrees. I'm using a 10 inch spring form pan and I line the bottom with a piece of parchment paper before snapping it into place then I trimmed off the excess overhang to within about three quarters of an inch from the edge of the pan. Now on my pan I also like to put a small piece of foil flat against the side of the pan where the seam is because sometimes I have trouble with the pan leaking. But if you're using a pan that you feel confident with, you can skip this step. Alright, now for the crust we'll need one cup of gluten-free flour blend. I used a blend by Glutino one quarter cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, one half cup of walnuts, pulverized or finely chopped. You can either put them in a food processor or in a Ziploc baggie and smash them with a mallet. One quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, one stick of butter, and one half cup of sugar. All right, first stir together the flour, cocoa, walnuts, and cinnamon and set this bowl aside. Then cream together the softened butter and sugar then add the flour mixture and mix until a soft dough forms. Spread this dough along the bottom of the prepared pan and an inch up the sides if you'd like. Then bake it for 15 minutes at 325 degrees and allow it to cool as you make the filling. Now for the filling you're going to need five packages of cream cheese, that's 40 ounces, one cup of sugar, one third of a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, one half cup of Bailey's Irish cream, one teaspoon of vanilla, one cup of sour cream, and four eggs. Now in a small bowl, mix together the Bailey's Irish cream, cocoa, and vanilla until you have a smooth, lump-free paste and set this aside. Now use a mixer to mix the cream cheese and sugar together until well blended. Use a rubber spatula to scrape down the sides of the bowl periodically. Now add the cocoa mixture and sour cream and continue beating. Then add the eggs and beat until the whole mixture is well combined. Pour it over the prepared crust and bake it at 325 degrees for 1 hour and 15 minutes. Now most people bake their cheesecakes in a bain-marie. But I just put it on a cookie sheet and placed the pan with water on the shelf beneath it. And it came out perfectly. If you do get cracks, which I usually do, don't worry about it since the ganache will cover that anyway. Let the cake cool completely before you refrigerate it and take it out of the springform pan. Now to make the Bailey's ganache, add 6 ounces of dark chocolate to a bowl with a half cup of Irish cream. Then place the bowl on top of a pot filled with about an inch of water and allow the water to come to a gentle simmer. The indirect heat will melt the chocolate, at which point you'll be able to stir the chocolate and the Baileys together until you have a smooth mixture. And now it's ready to pour over the top of the cake. You could use the back of a spoon or an offset spatula to spread it over the cheesecake. At this point I'd refrigerate it again for a few hours. And if you're transporting this cake, I'd leave it in the springform pan until you get to your destination. This cake made a trip to Grandma's house on Christmas Eve. But the decadence of this one would be great for any occasion. And when you bring something like this to the party, you'll feel none of that usual pain that often accompanies staring at the dessert table while maintaining a gluten-free diet. Now, if only I could have removed the calories as well as the gluten. Oh well, we can't have everything but you can print out the recipe if you visit my blog at the link below. And don't forget to subscribe. See you again soon.